Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FPL Consult here and today we're going to take a look at my Game Week 7 transfer plan so I'll discuss what I plan to do with my team come Game Week 7 and of course there's talk about a wild card coming soon because the fixture swings from Game Week 8 to Game Week 10 this particular period there are a lot of fixture swings for teams so a lot of us will be looking to ship out some players and hop on some fixture swings so I'll discuss when I plan to use my wild card as well and discuss a little bit of points to consider so hopefully this video is helpful for you guys and if you do enjoy it please give it a like and also subscribe as well if you are new around here so let's talk a little bit about when to wildcard now this is a question that i received a lot on all the different socials and basically a lot of us are thinking when is the best time to wildcard uh, some of us are rage wildcarding now in game week 7 because maybe we didn't do that well um, some of us are thinking of getting some Luton players now dead ending into game week 7 and then game week 8 you wildcard or there's also the option of wildcarding after the international break game week 9 or game week 10 so loads of different time periods to wildcard and I just thought I put out some points to consider here on the screen so that as you guys are deciding and planning your transfers that you have this at the back of your minds so the first thing I would say is that your next couple of transfers will determine when you use your wildcard because as we are getting closer to the wildcard window a lot of our transfers can be a little bit more aggressive if we are dead ending to a particular game week and then wildcarding out of it. Now a very obvious one as I just mentioned is going for Luton players now in game week 7 particularly Morris and then wildcarding out in game week 8 let's say right so Generally, the point is that your next couple of transfers, even if you're not wildcarding in game week 8, say game week 9 or game week 10, a lot of your transfers uh, will, de will determine when you use your wildcard. So plan out your next transfers for the next couple of game weeks. I would say the next 3 to 4 game weeks because that is when the wildcard window is. Assess how well you are maximizing each game week. Now, I mean this in terms of the fixtures as well as the players that you would want for those fixtures. Now, if you feel like your team isn't maximizing each game week that well and you would do better um, and take advantage of all the fixtures in each game week uh, with a wild card in, uh, in mind, right, where you can use more aggressive transfers now and then wild card out of it. If that's the way forward for your particular team that will allow you to maximize each, each game week, then go for it, go for the wild card. But obviously, you will have to weigh out the other scenario as well, where if you are not wild carding, what would your transfers be? And then when you compare the two, uh, is there that, that great of a difference and can you save your wild card? So those are things to think about. And obviously, make a game week 8, 9, and 10 wild card. Now, this may be... Um, take up quite a bit of time right but i feel like it will be useful especially to help you visualize your potential transfers if you wildcard in these windows and how your teams would actually differ as well and that can actually help you determine when you want to wildcard now another thing that i would say is you, you can actually think about a, a think about wildcarding in a particular perspective and that is how close can you get to your wildcard draft with just free transfers so now that you've made your game week 8 9 and 10 wildcard you make your free transfers or you plan your free transfers and try to get to this wildcard team in that particular game week that you decide to wildcard. If you can get to it or really, really close to it with a couple of hits, say a maximum of two hits, um, and it would get you to your, your wildcard draft in the game week that you decide to wildcard, then maybe it might be worth saving it, right? So that is something, that is also a perspective that you can take when you're thinking about when to wildcard. And of course, uh, the big question would be, do you want Mohamed Salah for the Liverpool fixture swing come um, game week? I think game week 9 onwards, you can actually start to jump on Salah already, right? Um, earlier, of course, if you want to jump ahead of the curve, if you work hard in game week 8 or game week 7 even, you would have Salah already, right? So, uh, important to consider, right, whether you want Salah, because if you don't want Salah, chances are you can actually stick with your current team, use free transfers, and then move around with it, obviously, if you don't have Salah currently, right? A big reason why people want to walk out around this period is, is to jump on Salah, and that will require some big restructuring of your team. So, consider also whether you want Salah, if you uh, don't go for him, maybe you can spread the funds a little better and maybe you get Son, you get Madison, you get an 8.5 million midfielder as well, then maybe you go for Trippier as well. So there are trade-offs. I don't think it's clear-cut whether 
um, we we have to have Salah in our wildcard draft, so do play around with it and see your preferences as well. And lastly, to consider is whether it's worth it to actually save the wildcard, right? Because obviously, if we don't use it now, we will hope that saving it in the to use it in the future would reap more benefits. So I would say that at this point in time, it does not seem like there's a very clear advantage because yes, there is a blank game week 18 moving forward, um, where Man City and Brentford blank, and then Ben Krellin on Twitter do drop him a follow as well he has mentioned that there's a possibility that it would be shifted the Brentford and Manchester City fixture may be shifted to double game week to, uh, 20 right game week 20 making it a double double game week so essentially there is a possibility for us to dead end into game week 18 swap out some Manchester City players sell um I would assume that before that, the fixtures are pretty good for Man City as well. So leading up to game week 18, we would have a couple of Man City assets. You can sell them because you're dead ending into game week 18. Bring them back on a game week 19 wildcard and prepare very well for the double game week 20 as well. So, of course, caveat is that double game week 20 is not confirmed. Blank game week 19, uh, 18 is confirmed. Right, so these are things to think about. There's no clear advantage, I would say, right now to delay your wildcard. But I think in general, having a wildcard handy in at the back of your pocket um, is always useful because come game week 16, there's also another fixture swing. We never know what can happen later on in the season. In a couple of game weeks, you may want to switch up your whole team, just like we're seeing right now where a couple of um, big hitters can return and then we're deciding, all right, maybe you don't really like our teams. So... I wouldn't say that there's a clear advantage, but I think there's definitely some benefit as to saving the wildcard for, for later on. And actually, currently, this is the strategy that I'm thinking about as well, to save the wildcard because I don't feel as if I need to use it um, in this particular wildcard window. And I'll discuss my plans moving forward. But let's take a look at the game week. 10 wildcard draft which is i think the time period a lot of us are looking to wildcard and see if you guys can reference it and maybe try and get to this particular wildcard draft by the time game week 10 comes with your free transfer so let's just hop on and take a look so taking a look at a game week 10 wildcard draft now i have just put this together after the game week 6 games so i've had some time to reassess take a look at the fixtures and put this together for you guys and i think that if i wildcard in game week 10 this is very likely the team that i would go with right so i've also used this particular draft to reference whether i can get very close to it and later on i will show you guys but just for now, in game week 10, I'm likely to go with this team if I wildcard, right? Ariola in goal, Turner as the backup keeper as well. This is really a really cheap combination as well, right? So, and I don't think Ariola loses his place anytime soon. Even if Turner doesn't play, he's just 4.0 million as well. Chances are he would likely keep his place for the time being, right? So, Ariola and Turner would be the, the keeper pairing. In the back line, there's Estupinian, Saliba, and Maddy Cash. Now, for Estupinian and Maddy Cash, both of them have very good fixtures from game week 10 onwards. So, I definitely have both of them in the team. Saliba, to take advantage of Arsenal's fixture turn as well, there is a pretty decent fixture run for Arsenal from game week 10 onwards. So, to have some defensive coverage, I'd go for the more um, stable pick in Saliba than Gabriel. And then for the other two defenders on the bench, it would just be Botman, really cheap, and also Kabore, 4.0 million bench fodder. Now, in midfield, I would go with Diaby, Bowen, Rashford, Salah, and Mitoma. Now, of course, there are different permutations to this midfield, but in general, I would say that Diaby... Salah and Mitoma would pretty much be locked if I walk out in game week 10. Rashford could become Bruno, could become a, uh, a Tottenham uh, Tottenham midfielder. It could be Son, it could be Madison. Bowen could also be someone else. It could be Madison, it could be Saka as well. Right, so this these are, these are just placeholders for the time being, but the structure would pretty much be like this for a Salah draft. And then up front, I have Jesus once again to take advantage of the Arsenal fixture swing. And Haaland, um, potentially a captain option in game week 10. He plays Manchester United away, so maybe you can captain Salah in this game week. But this is a very, very early look. And what I would say is just um, that the teams that we would want to target for uh, this particular wildcard window are all covered in this draft. Brighton have a good fixture swing. Uh, West Ham as well, so that's why we have Bowen here. Um, Aston Villa as well, so we double up here with Maddy Cash and Diaby. Liverpool, of course, with Mohamed Salah. Potentially some drafts in game week 10, I would imagine, have some Liverpool defenders as well. If Trent is back, maybe Trent, right? Um, and then up front, if um, Darwin Nunes seems to get some decent minutes, maybe Darwin Nunes is the striker. So for the time being, just based off of the after game week 6 review, 
this is how a game week 10 draft i think would look like and so for the time being based on my transfer plans which i'll show you guys i think i can get pretty close to this draft or at least some permutations of it which um, compromises on a couple of players for sure but compromises that i think i'm all right to make so let's take a look now at my team for game week 7 we're coming back to game week 7 now and i'll take a look at how my team looks like and see any poten potential transfers that i want to make so this is my team for game week 7 without transfers made. I have one free transfer, 4.7 million in the bank. So I have loads of money in the bank. And that's because I downgraded Chilwell to Botman uh, in game week 6, which worked out really well. Jackson to Alvarez didn't really bring much difference now. But I think having him for game week 7, if he starts, would come in handy. Jackson, of course, getting suspended. All right, so coming to game week 7 now, I wouldn't say that I absolutely love my team. But I won't say that I hate it as well. I think I'm alright with it. Yes, a lot of big hitters came from Tottenham. Those of you with Son, those of you with Madison, and those of you with Trippier as well who scored really, really well. I'm sure uh, that currently now in game week 7, um, I would want to jump on these players. But if I take a look at my team right now, I don't see any particular player or fixtures that turn me off. Now, if I if we assess a little bit deeper, Onana has Crystal Palace at home, so that's okay. Um, he did keep a clean sheet against Burnley. Maybe they, they should have conceded. I mean, Burnley hit the post as well, but it is what it is. They came away with a clean sheet, and maybe he goes on a run of clean sheets as well. The fixtures are there for Onana, so I'm fine with him. In the back line, I have a double game week player in Kabore. I'm perfectly fine to play him. Estupinian, Colwell and Botman, now all of them have decent fixtures. Colwell, of course, um, seems to be the first choice left back at this point in time. So I'm happy that I sold Chilwell instead of him. And it is likely that he will continue to start. So I'm alright to start him against Fulham away. Now in midfield, Mbuemo, Rashford, Foden and Saka, they all have decent fixtures. Nottingham Forest, Crystal Palace for Manchester United. Um, Foden has Wolves, Saka has Bournemouth. Right up front, Wolves for the Man City players uh, as well. So... The, the fixtures look good, right? It's really a question of whether I want to go for Morris. And at this point in time, I do see some justification to go for Morris because, of course, it's a double game week fixture. But then again, I, I also see it as a potential trap because Morris's numbers are not that great at all. And maybe if in game week six, they uh, he didn't get the penalty and, and if he didn't score that penalty, basically, I don't think a lot of us would be um, jumping on him right now. Right? I do imagine that a lot of us, because of how he performed in game week six, will start to uh, rethink a little bit and reconsider whether we want him. But for the time being, I still feel like he could be a trap, right? And for my team as well, I have one free transfer. If I do roll it into game week 8, there are a couple of moves that I can make in game week 8 to really improve my team because game week 8, Man City play Arsenal. So I have three Man City players here and one Arsenal player in Bukayo Saka. So if I save two free transfers, uh, if I save this free transfer now in game week 7 and bring two free transfers into game week 8, I can remove two of these um, players potentially Foden and Saka and I'll, I'll go into the replacements later on but in general I'm likely to save the transfer this week if I can resist going for Morris of course and of course in terms of the Man City assets here yes they play Wolves away it's a great fixture for them um, and the only thing that concerns me a little bit here is whether Foden or Alvarez gets arrested. The next best option on my bench is Ebrici Eze. So he plays Manchester United away. I don't think it's a great fixture for him. Um, even though Manchester, Manchester United haven't been playing really well um, in defence, but away at Old Trafford, Ebrici Eze hasn't been performing that well as well. So I'm not expecting too much. I wouldn't really want to play Eze. So hopefully all the Man City assets play. They have Wolves away, which is a great fixture. But I do imagine imagine we could see some rotation there so I'm really praying that both of them start. Alvarez did come off in the 56th minute in game week 6 so there's a potential uh, that he may start against Wolves. My gut feel tells me that he will start. For the time being um, we will get more information during the EFL Cup when they play uh, Man uh, they play Newcastle United. Right, We'll get to see some minutes there and I, I can reassess whether I think Foden and Alvarez starts. I doubt we will get any early team news this week because Man, Man City are not the early kickoff. So I may have to take a gamble if I want to save the free transfer, hold on to these three um, Man City assets and hope they play. So for the time being, that is the plan to roll the free transfer and let's take a look at my plans moving forward post game week 7. So this is my team on the Fantasy Football Hub Transfer Planner and looking at game week 7, this is probably how I would line up if I roll the free transfer. And let's move over onto game week 8 now. 
and I will have two free transfers here in game week 8. Of course, as I mentioned, game week 8 is where Manchester City play Arsenal. So I have a load of players playing each other here. The three Man City players particularly as well as Saka. So the plan is to remove Foden for Hyung Min Son and also remove Saka for James Madison. So this would be a double swap to bring two Tottenham players in because they have Luton, um, Fulham and Crystal Palace as their next three fixtures. So those are great fixtures for them. I do think like Spurs will continue to score regardless of the opposition because their attack just looks really strong now. Especially they're playing Luton. I really want both of them here. So if I were to line up my team in game week 8, I already have those two Spurs assets in. I would likely start Yudogi ahead of Kabori. Right, um, I'm likely to drop Estupinian to the bench because he plays um, Liverpool and I'll start Eze because he has Nottingham Forest. So this is likely how the team would look like for game week 8. Onana, Yudogi, Botman, Colwell at the back line. Eze playing Nottingham Forest. Rashford, Madison, Son, Mbuemo and then up front Julian Alvarez and Erling Haaland. So this would be game week 8, two free transfers used. Come to game week 9, what I'm likely to do is to use my one free transfer and sell Eberichi Eze for Diaby from Aston Villa. Now, this is a player that I definitely want for the long term. I do think like he's a better option than Ollie Watkins as well. So, making this free transfer in game week 9, this is also how my team is likely to look. Um, potentially, I can start Kabore, who plays Nottingham Forest, ahead of Colwell, who plays Arsenal. right? And then the team looks pretty alright in terms of fixtures as well. Now, come to game week 10, this is when I potentially wanted to wild card. And let's see how close I can get to it, right? So for the time being, the plan is to sell Marcus Rashford, who plays Man City in game week 10, and get Salah in. Once again, because I have quite a bit of money in the bank, um, of course, it shows, it shows minus 0 0.1 here, right? But I am able to take a hit and get him as well. So assuming I do um, Rashford out for Salah, right? And I couple that with a move to sell Mbwemo for Mitoma, this would be a team that I'm able to get to. Once again, so zero, currently it's 0, 0.0 in the bank. Maybe come game week 10, I won't be able to afford it. I may have to change my plan slightly. But for the time being, if you take a look, and I take, I've taken one hit now, because it's two transfers to bring Salah and Mitoma in for Rashford and Buemo. The team looks pretty similar to a game week 10 wildcard and this is basically what I've been talking about where I do feel like there is a potential that I want to save the wildcard for later on because my midfield is Diaby, Salah, Madison, Son and Mitoma. Um, Mitoma, Salah and Diaby were also in my previous game week 10 draft that you've seen in a couple of sections ago and the only difference would be Bowen, Jared Bowen, um, as well as a, a Manchester United asset, maybe Marcus Rashford or Bruno Fernandes, for Madison and Son, which I don't mind because they play Crystal Palace away as well. So I don't think I'm sacrificing too much with just a minus four that I've taken. I'm able to save the wild card and get to a team like this. So for the time being, if I bring us back to game week seven now, so as I mentioned, a lot of our transfers moving forward will dictate when we choose to wildcard. So for the time being, I'm going to keep my options open and I'm likely not to jump on Morris if I'm able to resist the temptation and then save the transfer for two free transfers going into game week 8. So let me know what you guys think of the plan. This on the screen right now is how I'm likely to go into game week 7. Let me know what changes you would make, if any, and what are you doing with your teams as well. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was useful for you. I hope game week 6 was good for you as well. If it wasn't, there are many game weeks to go. We are still very early on in the season. So let's push on. And thank you guys for watching. As always, I'll catch you guys in more game week 7 content coming very soon. Bye-bye.